Keep up with News Talk ZB News and our ongoing coverage of the Christchurch earthquake. The army patrols the streets of Christchurch. Uncertainty over how many people are still missing. Dangerous work for rescuers picking through the rubble. Horrific scenes in Christchurch as people call for help from the twisted wreckage of buildings. News Talk ZB Christchurch chief reporter Joe Scott says a number of buildings have totally collapsed in the CBD. From inside those buildings, police can hear survivors. Some are crying, shouting, knocking. Others are sending texts just pleading for help. They are saying that there have been some miracles throughout the night, but um, there have also been a huge number of people that have had to have limbs amputated before they can be rescued. The job of working out how many people have died is imprecise at the moment. <clears throat> While there are 38 bodies in a temporary morgue that's been set up, Civil Defence Minister John Carter says that won't be the final toll. We're aware there are people still trapped in buildings. We're not sure how many are injured, what fatalities there are. So we're gathering that sort of information. And Cabinet's due to meet at 9.30 this morning to make decisions about resourcing needs for Christchurch. The army's out patrolling the streets. Police are being brought in from all over the South Island and plane loads are arriving from Auckland later today. Here's Inspector Russell Gibson. It's been a shocking night here. Uh, rain, uh, very cold, uh, quite miserable. Russell Gibson says meanwhile the search continues in crushed buildings for victims. It's a painstaking process. Uh, one building, I think it's the CTV building here in Canterbury, a six-storey building. It probably uh, occupies five metres now. And one woman anxiously awaiting news from that building is Joan Rennie. Her daughter, Jo Giles, is believed to be trapped inside. I don't know. I haven't heard. I've rung the numbers that they've given us to ring, and they said they'd ring me back when they heard anything, but I haven't heard anything. There's uncertainty over just how many people may be still trapped in the PGG building. 22 people have been pulled out of the building. It was devastated by yesterday's 6.3 magnitude quake. As many as 22 more are thought to be trapped inside. PGG Chief Executive Jeff Greenslade says the company has confirmed a number of staff are OK, but others are yet to be located. We just don't know uh, whether they are in the building or um, are at home and with cell phone coverage and lines being done, it's just been very hard to try and make contact with people. And that rescue work is dangerous. Daniel Southall from Southall Building went to the city three weeks ago to help rebuild after the September quake. He says a crane company was lifting beams off buildings last night. Everyone had to get out of sight. There's a couple of other shops and they were looking at a different, different angle of um, getting in there with the machinery to try and dig a bit of the rubble because there's so much of it. Scaffolding hanging over you, so it's it's very dangerous. Daniel Southall says he'll be helping with the rescue effort again today. Civil Defence Director John Hamilton says most of the devastation caused by the quake is in the CBD. Apart from the Christchurch city itself, the rest of Canterbury seems to have got through pretty lightly. And so more information is emerging this morning about the state of outlying Mike parts Hosking, of Christchurch. Roger. Sumner Road has reopened this morning, opening up access to Littleton for the first time since the quake. The Littleton Tunnel remains closed. Every second building on the port's, uh, Port Town's main street has been severely damaged, with cordons closing off one block considered uninhabitable. Several of the Port Town's picturesque buildings have collapsed into a pile of rubble, with its oldest churches among the casualties. Building facades have fallen away, exposing the intimate insides of family homes. And in the hills above the main road, there are bare spots where houses once stood. Australian correspondent Steve Price says 148 experienced urban search and rescue experts are on their way to us. They're on their way there in a second team of 34. I think that's flying out this morning. And another 70 are going to head over from Queensland. So we're doing what we can, mate. And the United Kingdom is sending a 62-strong search and rescue team with more than nine tonnes of equipment to help relieve the rescuers in Christchurch. The BBC reports that the contingent is due to arrive tomorrow or by Friday. At least six schools in Christchurch will be used as water distribution centres. Water tankers are being sent to them today for people to collect water. Those schools are Littleton, Redcliffs, South New Brighton, Shirley, Wainoni and Phillipstown. Steps are also underway to get food supplies into the city. 
Uh, temporary beds are being set up in Wellington for those being evacuated from Christchurch. Civil Defence is relocating tourists who want to get out, obviously, of the quake hit city. The Air Force started flying people out of Christchurch early this morning. Positively, Wellington Tourism's David Perk says accommodation in Wellington is already at full capacity, but hotels are increasing that for those in need. A number of the city's larger hotels have conference facilities are ready and willing and able to set up dormitory-style accommodation for guests. They're just saying that we'll make space for people wherever to make sure we look after these people at this time. And those deserted in Wellington last night because of cancelled flights had hundreds of others uh, of offers of accommodation to choose from. Wellington Airport says its website's gone crazy with residents listing their homes and even offering their cars for those stuck in the capital. So adding everything up. The official death toll from the Christchurch quake is still 32. That's the number of bodies that police have identified, but the total number of fatalities has been put at as many as 65 by the Prime Minister uh, last night. The focus this morning is on search and rescue. Civil Defence is not sure how many people are still trapped in collapsed buildings. Urban search and rescue specialists are focusing on finding people in 10 buildings in the CBD, which are the most critically damaged. Messages of support and offers of help from around the world are flooding in. Prime Minister John Key says so far today he's received messages from the British PM, David Cameron, members of the Royal Family and Australia's Julia Gillard. There's just so many countries that said, look, if they can offer specialist support, they would. Uh, the Israeli Prime Minister rang last night so they have very specialist equipment if, if that was useful. So um, we are really rallying around. John Key says daylight will help, obviously, when it comes to assessing the next steps. 30 million tonnes of ice collapsed from the Tasman Glacier's face into its terminal lake as a result of the earthquake. Aoraki Mount Cook Alpine Village tourism manager Dennis Callison says it was a rocky ride for passengers aboard two glacier explorer boats. They encountered waves, uh, which technically, yes, they're called tsunamis, but they're not breaking waves up to 3.5 metres high over a 30-minute period as all of that ice broke up, fractured, rolled. Dennis Callison says there are now several thousand icebergs in the lake, the largest being 250 metres long. And an emergency cabinet meeting will be held at 9.30 this morning to discuss the situation in Christchurch. Offers of specialist teams from Japan and the United States to help find people trapped in buildings will be one of the issues discussed. Following that meeting, all political parties will be briefed on the ongoing situation. Two emergency cabinet meetings were held yesterday, and uh, Earthquake Recovery Minister Jerry Brownlee, he's obviously cut short his trip to the Middle East. He's heading home, and a meeting of earthquake ministers will take place uh, tomorrow. The Commonwealth Secretary General has sent a message of condolence. Kamali Sharma has written to John Key saying he's distressed stressed and profoundly concerned about the earthquake and aftershocks that have so severely blighted Christchurch yet again. He says their hearts and condolences go immediately to the bereaved. He sent encouragement and solidarity to emergency services and uh, British Prime Minister, as we mentioned, David Cameron, has also sent his condolences. And for the latest from Christchurch, you can visit our website, newstalkzb.co.nz, for live updates, pictures and the latest audio on demand. I'm Kate Hawksby from the News Talk ZB News Centre. More on this Christchurch earthquake, of course, for you this morning as it breaks on the Mike Hosking Breakfast. In News Talk ZB Sport, the Crusaders have lost a member of their rugby family as a result of the Christchurch earthquake. Crusaders Chief Executive Hamish Riak says one of their board members has died. Riak says he'll talk to the Crusaders coaches, management and senior players today about Saturday's match against the Hurricanes in Wellington. Ironically, today is the team's day off uh, in terms of their training schedule, so they're not due to turn up at, um, at, at work today. So we'll just follow our nose once once we've had a, some conversations with the senior management guys. Hurricanes prop Namir Tialata has called for Saturday's match to be postponed. Tialata has posted on Twitter there's more to life than rugby and that it's just a game. A minute silence likely to be held for Quake victims during the Black Caps World Cup match against Australia in Nagpur on Friday. Manager Dave Curry has confirmed to Brendan McCullum, Hamish Bennett and media manager Ellery Tappan have decided to stay on with the team after being given the option of returning home. Skipper Daniel Vittori says the team is devastated. Some frightening news for the guys to wake up to this morning, particularly the guys who, who live in Christchurch and have a, a lot of family there. So our, our thoughts and prayers with them as much as possible. I think it's, it's hard to really fathom what's going on when you're so far away. 
away. And commentator Brian Waddell says there was a strange feeling at practice in Chennai this morning with a spontaneous minute silence in the team huddle. New Zealand Cricket CEO Justin Vaughan says the White Ferns women's team had a lucky escape when the quake struck. The New Zealand women's team were actually leaving their hotel in the central city just as the earthquake occurred. They ended up walking sort of about 10 or 15 k out of town to one of the girls' family's houses. Justin Vaughan says two members of his staff are still unaccounted for. And All Whites captain Ryan Nelson feels helpless watching the disaster in his hometown from the other side of the world. I've been away from Christchurch for probably 14, 15 years now. This is, for some reason this is, the, this is the one time I've just absolutely just wished I've, I've been home and just kind of with my family and friends at the moment. Ryan Nelson says his family's OK and his sister remarkably gave birth to a baby boy just half an hour after the quake. A heartfelt hand from Warriors second rower Lewis Brown for those devastated by the quake. Brown is from Christchurch and has been transfixed to the television. This just seems like a big dream to me. You know, I, mean, I watched you know, what happened on September 4 and but this is just you know, you know, the ultimate thing that could happen. You know, it's just bloody, it's terrible and uh, mate, you know, I've got, got a tear in my eye. It's Lewis Brown. I'm Matt Brown for News Talk ZB Sport. News Talk ZB Time Saver Traffic and Travel now looking to our roads, which are all a bit of a mess this morning. Now, of course, the central city is closed. Please stay away for your own safety, and so emergency services can do what they need to do. We have had a number of calls from people ringing and wanting to head into the city and help. They have help. It is safer for you to just stay at home, stay off the roads. Remember, schools probably for the rest of the week are also closed. Wendy Meyer, News Talk ZB Time Saver Traffic and Travel. Forecast for Christchurch today, showers clearing by early afternoon and fine breaks developing. South westerlies turning northeast this afternoon with a high of 18 and a low of 9. Thursday, fine weather, northeasterly winds turning gusty northwest in the evening with a high of 22. Friday, showers and southerlies developing in the morning. Saturday, showers clearing and fine spells increasing, southerlies dying out. Sunday, fine with light winds. And forecast for Canterbury Plains today, cloudy with a few showers, becoming confined to the foothills early this afternoon and fine breaks developing. Remaining showers clearing from the south this evening, light winds inland, south westerlies about the coast turning northeast this afternoon. Thursday mainly fine with northwesterly winds, southerlies and a few showers developing south of Ashburton in the evening, and Friday showers and southerlies spreading throughout the morning, Saturday showers clearing and fine smells increasing. The Mike Hosking Breakfast this morning. And do you need to get to buildings in the, in the, in the wider city centre and then out into the suburbs, do you know or not? Um, at this stage, the, the focus of our operations has been within the CBD, but, but clearly we're working with all the other agencies and authorities to, to make sure we're pushing as far as the field as is necessary to, to have all the information and, and make sure there are people that can be rescued. And Listen get for updates all day. Then Larry Williams Drive from 4 on News Talk ZB. Shoulder to shoulder with Christchurch. This is the Mike Hosking Breakfast on News Talk ZB. Parker was saying earlier on this morning that um, I think most of us have to be prepared for the fact that we will know somebody who will probably have died. Mm, exactly. I mean, you know Christchurch so well, Mike. You know, it's uh, absolutely the city of six degrees separation. Um, and, yeah, there will be thousands and thousands of Cantabrians this morning already grieving for people that they know um, have not made it through. Um, and I suppose... This double whammy of earthquakes once again reinforces how random the discrimination is yep. as to who's lucky, who's not, and boy, oh boy, what a, what a rough, repugnant lottery life can be. Isn't it just? I mean, why the Pine Gould building? Why that building? Why, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, well, I think this also is going to raise a lot of questions about our building code because the, the Pine Gould building and the CTV building, New they buildings. are not old brick buildings, no. no. So why did they fall? Exactly. And of course, I know, I know this is early days, but longer term, there, there must be some monumental decisions to be made, massive discussions to be had about the future of Christchurch. What do you rebuild? Where do you rebuild? Yes. What does it look like? Do people stay? Do they not? Do you sell? Do you go? Big question. Absolutely. Yeah. Big, big Can you trust Christchurch? Will you feel safe in Christchurch? I actually think, Mike, without wanting to get too far ahead of ourselves here, I think this also raises big question marks over whether Christchurch can play a part in the Rugby World Cup. Yep. 
I think that um, those are those are decisions yet to be made, of course, and for another day. But still, the uh, the search and rescue. Do you have a sense in the heart of Christchurch? I know you're the commodore near the airport, and uh, the airport's now operating on domestic flights, mm. and those special flights are coming in and out. Do you have? A Classic the kids of Bon Jovi living on a prayer 25 past eight. Uh, Thoughts today with Christchurch, Canterbury, and as the images come through, the daylight emerges. It's uh, you just you don't you almost want to think it's a nightmare. You just want to wake up and think this didn't happen here in little old New Zealand. Uh, Leader of the opposition, Phil Goff, was yesterday in Christchurch. He was just down there purely for business and ended up sort of in the middle of the earthquake. He was uh, around the Pine Gould building, which was uh, one of the uh, buildings where people were trapped yesterday. And this is his account of what he saw yesterday in Christchurch. Uh, One young man that I talked to there, uh, his fiancée was in the building. They are due to be married uh, this Friday. And a terrible situation for him and uh, the young woman's mother. But... uh, uh, fortunately, they'd received a text, and uh, I'm hoping that she was one of the uh, 10 or 12 people that were uh, uh, able to be extracted from the building by the rest team. That's uh, Phil Goff speaking yesterday. We'll update the latest in news in a moment. Here's a girl who uh, no doubt will have had her mind on Christchurch yesterday as a Christchurch girl. This is Anika Moa and Dreams in My Head. Classic Kids. It's Kiwi Sounds of Tamika Mawa. It's uh, Dreams in My Head. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, how really the only way to get communications with people uh, down there in Christchurch with the earthquake was through things like Facebook and Twitter. And uh, G'day, Jason. How are you this morning, mate? You all right there? Yeah, you're there. Yeah, yeah, I am. Now, Jason, you were just saying uh, you guys, you've been involved with setting something up which has been helping get a lot of communications through. Yeah, absolutely. So we've um, set up all of the Wellington Emergency Management Office's uh, Twitter networks and Facebook pages. Now, the one to follow in Wellington is if you go to twitter.com slash WeMoNZ, that's uh, W-E-M-O-N-Z, uh, and that'll take you through to the Wellington Emergency Management page. Now, if you follow up to receive text alerts, uh, if there's a tsunami coming into Wellington, uh, if we have a major earthquake or anything else like that, this will prove a very effective dissemination tool for information. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what you want to follow. It's twitter.com slash WEMONZ, W-E-M-O. Indeed. Now, the, uh, the thing is, it's been amazing. Uh, I guess, you know, people joke about, you know, the fact that social media is, you know, social. But I, and I, I think we saw it in Egypt a couple of weeks ago as well. It just proves how actually these, these Twitters and the Facebooks can actually be useful in emergencies. Oh, hugely, hugely useful. In the States, they use them all the time. And it's not, it's not actually just for uh, getting information out to the public. It's also an intelligence tool, like Karen talked about before, in terms of getting information back into the emergency management office. Um, or, I mean, basically, the more information that you can get, the better it is. Yeah. And in the past, um, we've sort of been limited by the, the delay which you have in mainstream media. And, you, and like Karen talked about, you don't have that in social media. So in the States, with the bigger earthquakes and, uh, and tsunamis and hurricanes and everything that they've had over there, hugely effective. Yeah. The other thing which they use it for is um, actually lifting morale um, among search and rescue teams in the States. They've got closed Twitter networks over there, and um, basically they tweet success stories out through um, Twitter to all of their search and rescue guys to keep their morale up, because that's the other big issue which you've got in an emergency yeah. is uh, keeping everyone's heads high. Good stuff. Hey, look, appreciate that, mate. You have a good day. It's just gone 8.30. Here's the latest news. From the News Talk ZB Newsroom, this is Classic Hits News. Horrific scenes in Christchurch as people call for help from the wreckage of the massive earthquake. Christchurch Chief Reporter Joe Scott says a number of buildings have totally collapsed in the CBD beside the Pine Gould and the Canterbury Television buildings. From inside those buildings, police can hear survivors. Some are crying, shouting, knocking. Others are sending texts just pleading for help. They are saying that there have been some miracles throughout the night, but um, there have also been a huge number of people that have had to have 
limbs amputated before they can be rescued. The army is out patrolling the streets of Christchurch. Police are being brought in from all over the South Island and plane loads are arriving from Auckland later today. Inspector Russell Gibson says there have been no arrests for issues such as looting. It's been a shocking night here. Uh, rain, uh, very cold, uh, quite miserable. Russell Gibson says, meanwhile, the search continues in crushed buildings for victims. It's a painstaking process. Uh, one building, I think it's the CTV building here in Canterbury, a six-storey building, it probably uh, occupies five metres now. Civil Defence Director John Hamilton says most of the devastation caused by the quake is in the CBD. Apart from the Christchurch city itself, the rest of Canterbury seems to have got through pretty lightly. But more information is emerging about the state of outlying parts of Christchurch. Sumner Road has reopened this morning, opening up access to Littleton for the first time since the quake. The Littleton Tunnel remains closed. Every second building on the port's ta port town's main street has been severely damaged, with cordons closing off one block considered uninhabitable. Several of the port's town's... Away from Christchurch for probably 14, 15 years now. And this is for some reason this is the this is the one time I've just absolutely just wished I've I've been home and just kind of with my family and friends at the moment. But in one piece of good news, Ryan Nelson's sister gave birth to a baby boy just half an hour after the quake. And it takes a lot for a warrior to cry, but Lewis Brown admits the devastation of the quake's done just that. The second row is from Christchurch, and he says watching up in Auckland is just too much to bear. I'm getting upset just watching the telly and that, and uh, if, I can do, if I could do anything, mate, I, I'd try to, you know, but I feel so helpless being up here, and I'm just a phone call away from my family and their mate, and I'm just hoping everyone else is just hanging in there and staying strong with their family. And I'm Matt Brown for News Talks EB Sport. News Talk ZB weather for Christchurch today. Showers clearing early afternoon, fine breaks developing. The southwesterly is turning northeast this afternoon. The high today, 17 degrees, the overnight low, 8. Tomorrow for Christchurch, fine northeasterly is turning gusty northwest in the evening, heading for a high of 21. For the weekend, there is rain forecast, I'm afraid. Uh, showers on Friday, uh, showers Saturday, it should become fine on Sunday. Currently in the Garden City, it's cloudy, it's dry at the moment, and we have 12 degrees at News Talk ZB. News Talk ZB Extra. This flyby sinks. Our mortgage goes into flybys, we have points for that in petrol and chemist and things. And what I did at the end of the year is I tallied them up, um, divided by three, because there's three in our family, and we bought uh, Christmas presents with them. Nice idea. Yeah, it was brilliant actually. We just gave our um, gave the flyby bro uh, brochure to our daughter and said, "Here, um, you've got so and so many points. You can pick what you want for Christmas." There was an earlier caller that said they pay off their credit card every month. We, we do the same thing. We have an American Express card. You get double points, whatever that's worth. We. Uh, Saved up all our points. We're going on holiday to Australia this year and we were able to book all our accommodation through American Express Travel and didn't have to pay a cent. That was a News Talk ZB Extra. A very good morning, Canterbury. I'm Mike Yardley. Uh, we are broadcasting from our makeshift facilities uh, from the Copthorne City Commodore Hotel in Memorial Ave. Uh, just uh, a couple of kilometres away from Christchurch International Airport, which is one of the big lifelines, as we deal to another repugnant blow by the forces of nature. I hope you've made it through the night OK. We have lost a lot of dear people, haven't we, in the last 24 hours? And if we find you in a state of grief this morning, can I start by extending our sincere thoughts and prayers from the News Talk ZB family to yours? We are operating on uh, a very limited uh, infrastructure today, so I hope you can bear that in mind, and we will do our level best to bring you critical information as it comes to hand to try and make uh, your life, your day, just a bit easier. If you would like to contact the program, we have got telephones uh, that are being uh, directed via our Auckland 
uh, station, uh, you can reach us on 340-1098. We understand the 0800 number should be working as well. If you get a voice prompt, please choose Christchurch, which I think from memory is number three. You may not get that voice prompt, but you are very welcome to call the show, share with us, whether it be your own experiences, advice, information you think we need to be imparting with wider Canterbury, 340-1098 or 0800-80-1080. You may be aware that uh, News Talk ZB's uh, frequency of 1098am is not operating. We have had uh, earthquake-related issues, uh, which uh, are probably best described as transmitter site problems. Uh, so that has knocked out our frequency, 1098am. Uh, if you come across people who are wondering where has ZB gone, you will find it uh, at the moment across uh, our range of radio network stations. Uh, the best bet is to go just slightly to the left of 1098am, go to 1017. Uh, you'll get the signal loud and clear on 1017am. Similarly, on the FM band, oh, ZB's gone FM, uh, 97.7 or 106.5, you will get... Uh, this morning's coverage on those FM frequencies. Uh, just to repeat the telephone number, 340-1098 or 0800 You can call us any time between now and noon, just as uh, the city encounters another shake. Now, we will bring you uh, information from civil defence and from all of the respective agencies as it comes to hand. Before we go any further, we'll take you to our chief reporter, who is stationed at uh, Civil Defence at the Art Gallery, Joe Scott. G'day, Joe. Hello, Joe, can you hear me? Joe, can you hear me? Good morning. All right, I think we've got some technical issues there. We'll see if we can attend to that. Uh, I can tell you, by the way, that if you do require um, official assistance, uh, the government earthquake helpline is up and running, 0800. Actually, bear with me while I get that number, 0800 777 0800-77-9997. Now, I'm aware that there will be many people listening to this special broadcast from Canterbury all around the world, and I know that um, many people overseas are anxious to get information. Um, there is a special international number that you can call to get access to information here in New Zealand. If you are listening to us on the internet overseas, this is the government helpline number for you, plus 64... 7850-2199 for international callers, plus 64-7850-2199. We will repeat these numbers throughout the morning. There is obviously a huge concern about the number of missing people, people who are unaccounted for, people we just don't know where they are and in what state they are. If you would like to notify the authorities of such an individual, we urge you to do so. This is the dedicated Red Cross number for missing people reports. 0800 733 276. 0800 733 276. That is actually 0800 Red Cross. OK, let us uh, see if we can establish contact with our chief reporter, Joe Scott. Joe, can you hear me? I can hear you, Mike. Joe, what's the latest? Um, Mayor Bob Parker is just addressing a throng of reporters outside civil defence headquarters now. He has confirmed that there are six sites that they are primarily searching within the CBD. The CTV building, of course, is one of those, and Pine Gold, Venice, and the other buildings have also been identified in the media. He said um, he has just been down himself to the CTV site, and he can confirm that it has now been several hours before since any survivor was pulled out of that building. Nevertheless, he says that the search and rescue operation there is proceeding as if there are survivors inside. There are currently around 200 um, people who are um, urban search and rescue staff that are on the ground. Within 48 hours, that number of staff will swell to 700, with more recruits arriving from Japan, the US, Australia. There's already an Australian team on the ground here, and of course the UK. So that is the, um, the very latest from the Mayor. All right. Uh, Joe, any estimates on how many people are unaccounted for in those buildings? 
they are being very careful at this point not to um, put any figures at all on it. Um, mm. There is going to be a full civil defence briefing at 10.30 this morning and then there will be a major media conference um, here at civil defence headquarters at 11 o'clock, at which point the Mayor hopes we will be able to update on the figures available, on the, on the oh. figures then. All right. And, Joe, while we've got you, I suppose we should uh, restate uh, that later this morning there are going to be a number of primary schools uh, serving as water stations around Christchurch. We understand that the time this will start will be 11 o'clock, right? That's right. Take your own containers there. Um, they're also saying please do keep trying to collect rainwater. Currently 80% of the city um, is without water. It's going to be some time uh, before that can be um, reinstated. Currently about 50% of the city now has power, predominantly those west of the, C the suburbs west of the CBD. Um, I've spoken to Orion's um, Roger Sutton this morning. He's hoping that by the end of the day that number will be about 80% percent of the city online and New Brighton, the um, damage to Orion's infrastructure there is severe. There is one substation in particular that has sunk two metres into the ground and the talk is it could be, it could be weeks before that can be reinstated. Extraordinary, yes. And uh, Joe, I'm sure you've noticed as well as you've uh, tried your best to make your way around town, the level of liquefaction and silt and flooding is just immense, isn't it? It is um, absolutely immense. A lot of the liquefaction um, has drained away, but there is still significant surface flooding. Um, coming into um, here, the art gallery, at um, half four o'clock this morning, the um, liquefaction in and around Shirley was just unbelievable, and there were just potholes all through the roads. I was in Queen's Park yesterday. There are holes in the road out there the size of cars. I saw a brand-new Ford Ranger just sunk in the middle of the road um, mm. with liquid up to its, its driver's windows, um, just absolutely um, devastating out there. Littleton um, as well is particularly badly hit. And I've managed to see a few of the buildings um, as well that have been damaged. There's substantial damage to the art centre. I'm told that the ANZ chambers on the corner of High and Litchfield Street are down as well. There's um, a lot of windows that have been smashed. The old post office in Cathedral Square um, that gorgeous turret with those round windows is pretty destroyed. And, of course, the, the cathedral itself, the tower is down. There were people in the tower when it fell down. There were people inside the cathedral, though it is not known how many were inside the cathedral. And um, search and rescue teams, as of late last night, had been unable to re-enter that building because it was simply too, um, too dangerous. Yes. By the way, beyond the central city, Joe, obviously there have been pockets of immense uh, building damage, you know, in, in suburbia. Do we know if uh, the police and their search and rescue teams have, have managed to pinpoint areas of concern in suburbia? I have no um, information on that, that yet. I know that New Brighton, as I said, is an area of um, particular concern. That is the sort of information we are hoping to get at this 11 o'clock briefing. Um, Littleton as well, the epicentre of the 6.3 earthquake, is also in a bad way. Um, I know that there are a number of people um, severely injured in Littleton that have actually been taken on board the ATM NZS at Canterbury. Of course, the frigate was moored at the port at the time. Um, so yes. certainly uh, that, was, that was fortunate if there is to be any silver lining in Indeed. the situation today. That, that was a small mercy, absolutely, yes. And it's amazing, I mean, here at the Commodore, um, a lot of the uh, deep freeze uh, US personnel uh, will use this as a bit of a, as an interim accommodation uh, property before they head back to the States. And a lot of them made their way into the city yesterday afternoon to lend a hand to the emergency services. So, yep, through all the clouds, um, there are some amazing stories emerging, Joe. Uh, thanks oh, very definitely. much for your update. Yeah, uh, we will certainly keep in touch with you through the morning. Talk to you soon. Joe Scott. Cheers. Bye-bye. Joe Scott, uh, our chief reporter who was at Civil Defence at the Christchurch Art Gallery. Our telephone number is 340-1098 or 0800 80 1080. We'd love to get an insight from you as to how you have uh, got on through the night. Uh, how much sleep did you manage? I think I clocked up 29 minutes at last count. So if you're feeling 
not only shell-shocked but sleepy today. I am sure you're not alone. Um, and I would love to get um, some first-hand perspectives from you this morning as to um, how you compare the horror of what we've been through in the last 24 hours to September 4. Maybe you were like me. Your house uh, emerged reasonably unscathed from September 4, but it has been absolutely smashed on February 22. Um, give us your reports, your insights. They are most welcome. If you can't get to the phone, the email address, by the way, is Mike Yardley at newstalkzb.co.nz. Now, we are not op- uh, operating our normal commercial loads this morning, uh, chiefly out of respect for those that we have lost in the last 24 hours. So there will be a lot of burbling from me. We'd certainly love you to play a key part in the program this morning. It is 8 to 9, News Talk ZB. News Talk ZB Extra. I need you to clarify. So the legislation says that you have to spend nearly $3.5 million. The legislation... No, the legislation doesn't say that, Larry. Correct. Uh, the legislation makes it quite clear what we as a council need to consider. Uh, and so we are the officers of, uh, of our council and uh, that board have been through a process trying to determine how best to uh, get advice and support in beside those board members so they can uh, carry out their role uh, you think this uh, money is well spent money. then? You think the money is well spent? Uh, look, uh, the, the, the next thing that I want to say, Larry, is it's, uh, at this point in time it's draft. We haven't um, approved it uh, full and final. Uh, it's part of our annual plan process, so it's part of the overall budget for the whole of council. It's going to go out to the community for their feedback and input and then finalisation in June. So there's a, it's really the beginning of the process rather than the end. That was a News Talk ZB Extra. News Talks be with Mike Yardley. Uh, we are live across Canterbury this morning with our continuing coverage of the earthquake. Uh, our lines are free, so if you want to give us a call before nine, um, feel free. We'd love to get um, your perspective on how your world is today, 340-1098 or 0800 80 1080. Um, I've been asked to run through those schools that will be serving as water stations later this morning. So these are the ones that we know of. There is every chance this could be extended uh, as uh, the day and days go by. But uh, from 11 o'clock this morning, this is where you will be able to take a container uh, and get some water. Redcliffe's Primary School, Phillipstown Primary School, South New Brighton Primary, Shirley Primary, Wynone Primary and also Littleton Primary. Um, Just repeating, these are all the primary schools that will be water stations. Redcliffs, Phillipstown, South New Brighton, Shirley, Wynone and Littleton. And if uh, that uh, list is amended or extended, we will certainly let you know. Christchurch Airport is now open for domestic flights. Uh, We have been advised by the Chief Executive that many people have been coming to the uh, terminal Uh, This morning, passengers are asked to check with your airline or the airport website before actually heading out to the airport. Uh, The airport is up and running, but if lots of people get out there without confirmed flights, you will know the uh, end result of that. Not good. So, if you intend to uh, get out of Christchurch via aircraft today, um, you can keep an eye on um, progress and updates on the airport website, which is christchurchairport.co.nz. Uh, similarly, uh, Air New Zealand and Jetstar will be running additional services today on top of their usual schedules between uh, Christchurch and Auckland and Christchurch and Wellington. That's for Air New Zealand. Uh, I think the same is the case for Jetstar. Yes, it does appear to be. All right, we'll keep you posted on that. We'll go to the calls. Elsa, good morning. Uh, yes, um, Michael. Um, now, this water business, we haven't got a skerrick here this morning. Not a skerrick asleep because their things were going all at night, weren't they? But um, what I was just thinking about is that Wynone and Redcliffs would be the closest. I'm not very conversant with these places. Okay, whereabouts are you, Elsa? I'm in 224B Milton Street. What part of town is that? Milton Street, just off Colombo Street, off the sort of Haxley Street. Oh, 
I'm with you, yes. Um, yes, there doesn't appear to be uh, a school, probably, what, Phillipstown would be the closest, would it, I think? Just hang yes. on a moment, Mike. Would you, Mike? Well, I can't. Oh, where's she gone? <laughs> Just to repeat, uh, the water stations, Redcliffe's Primary, Phillipstown Primary, South New Brighton, Shirley, Wynone and Littleton. Uh, I am aware that there is um, a lot of liquefaction through Beckenham, St Martins and Kashmir. So I, if I can be so outspoken, I am surprised there is not a water station being made available at this point in that part of town. However, I would imagine this uh, situation can change, um, so we'll keep you posted. Did Elsa come back or did she disappear? I think she might have had a bit of trouble with the, the radio and the phone. Okay. Uh, Tom, good morning. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Hi, Mike. It's um, Tom Hawker here. Hello, Tom Hawker, my you're, very good friend from CTV. You're doing all right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm with Penelope here, so we're safe. Um, well, Tom, it's so good to hear your voice. What do you know about your crew? Um, at the moment, there's um, how many... 16 un, um, people in the building, unaccounted for. 16 from CTV? Yeah. Um, and then we've got, um, I think we're 11 today that we know of at the moment. So, um, yeah, not good. Not good news at all. Whereabouts were you, Tom, when this happened? We were actually, we are on our lunch break and um, we were just coming across the road from where the IRD is. You know where the IRD is? Yes. Um, and we just all of a sudden watched it happen right in front of us. The whole building just collapsed with everyone in it. So we're about probably a minute to 30 seconds away from entering the building. So just to clarify, and I, I don't want to um, get too far ahead here, but just to clarify, you, aren't, you haven't spoken to anyone yourself who has got out of that building? Uh, not. Um, there's only one person that actually ran, ran out of the CTV building as it happened, mm. and that was uh, Mary Ann. The receptionist. Yeah, so she's the only, she's the one that actually ran out of the building, and she's the only one that that we know of so far. That's um. Oh boy. Yeah. But um, because all the other other crew that were out on field shoots are, are safe. Um. But yeah, sort of most most of the staff are in there, unfortunately. Yes. Well, Tom, thanks so much for giving us a call. Um, no, that's all right. I just thought I'd pass it on. I'm pleased you did. Um, give my regards to Penelope, and uh, for the sake of the wider audience, Tom and Penelope are two of my production staff on CTV's Newsmakers. Mm -hmm. We'll keep in touch, Tom, and we'll be praying for them. Wonderful. Cheers, Mike. Cheers, Tom. We'll come back to your calls after 9 o'clock at News Talk ZB. You can reach us on 340 1098 or 0800 80 1080 to email me, uh, Mike Yardley at News Talk ZB. .co.nz. Uh, by the way, if you are in need of help and you are struggling to get through on the official numbers, feel free to use us. Feel free to use the radio station to get your appeal for help out uh, in, in public. Uh, you're very welcome to use us for that. The news is next at News Talk ZB.